Hey folks, welcome to another TW2020 video with myself, 21 Maxwell, and you join us today for our Impact Wrestling pay-per-view. We have the Impact Tag Team World Cup. I feel like we're at a stage of Impact, even as early doors as we are, less than 20 episodes in, where I think we'll probably be at this level for a good wee while. I could probably see us being here to maybe 2022. We really need the expansion of a second... I'm leaving a second TV show, just a better TV deal and more exposure from that. So, it's a tough one because I'd love to get the deal we're in, but I don't want to financially hinder us. And I feel like the steps we maybe take might be risk, more risk than reward. But obviously, as soon as we get to that medium size and get the, the more exposure, because really at the moment we can only really go from small, or I think it's very small to small in terms of the networks that want to look at us and I'd rather at least get to medium so we know we're going to get some eyes on the television product but the view the the views in the game are not great and it's up to us to try and make the company more popular i think we're only really gaining like one or two pop per month for over five shows and that's mostly for the the pay-per-view itself so i do feel there's a, a long long way to go but hopefully we can keep the storylines interesting it is going to be quite a lot of the same roster, there is a couple of debuts today, admittedly, but that's one we've been telling you about, and another one we're able to recruit, but of course it is going to be all free agents and uh, that we will be bringing in, nobody for WWE, nobody from AEW unless they release them, and uh, of course we always have that risk that if we get someone that's too popular, they may seek their employment elsewhere, so risky, but hey, we've not deceived us for a while, this is like managing in like League One, a League 2 and Football Manager and it's all part of the journey to get there. It just might take a bit of time, so hopefully you do join us for that. But anyway, we are on with a, an event today. No boost, because that would just cripple us financially. So we're straight in with the Impact Tag Team World Cup. Here are your semi-finals, your final, plus hopefully a stellar pay-per-view card. Let's do this. So we've managed to get 1,738 people at the Florida Atlantic University Baseball Stadium in the region we're most popular in and let's be honest that pretty much equates to what we um, so say we, when we do the tapings we get 400 fans if we'd done four individual shows we'd get this attendance so there you go make it up on pay-per-view so all our gate receipt is mostly on this particular show, that's why it has to be in the most popular area. So I went with a wee bit of a, a cheap highs promo, so we can put less pressure on the main event. Just a cut angle come out, wish everyone a good show. Says so he's looking forward to what he's produced today. We're going to see obviously the debut of that free agent. We are going to have obviously the semi-finals and the final of the Tag Team World Cup to decide the best tag team. And we're also going to have a AEW Knockouts Championship. Oh god, I've played AEW that much. The Impact Knockouts Championship match and the World Championship. That's when we've had so much fun in both your saves when you're calling it the other one. But 74 promo as Angle gives us that cheap rate. And that's why I brought a cut in. Just he can cover the promos and then everybody else can just wrestle. Opening contest was in the Impact World Cup semi finals and it was a superb matchup. They saw the team of Cash Wheeler and Dax Harwood. The FTR defeat the Inflictors of Pain in 1337 when Cash Wheeler pinned Dinza after using a foreign object. So a 60 here, 4 good performances, 4 of our most over guys and they're in the tag division and that's with Dax Harwood being slowed down by an injury. It's obviously quite a bad one he's got, the tail cracked tailbone but we wanted to book FTR strongly and that is what's happening. So Dax is getting better his gimmick and he'll progress into the final later on tonight. So we then have the Desi Hit Squad who come to the ring, despite it saying backstage promo, basically complaining that they obviously have been left to the side effectively and Rohit wants the X Division Championship back, he's frustrated that it's been a case of the last month or so has been geared towards Will Ospreay versus Leo Rush and he wants his opportunity. So he's frustrated and him and Raj get the 28 promo. This leads to a man coming out to make his debut, Chad Betts, who has signed on a written contract. As he moves on an exclusive written deal from 
leaving WWE. So again, someone I felt like was great in the ring, good promo, and someone that can hopefully carry the company. So he debuts a legitimate athlete gimmick, which got an initial rating of adequate. And he just says, he's been here this morning, he's here, he's ready for competition, he's ready to pick up his first victory in Impact Wrestling. So a 33 for the Chad Betts promo. And a decent match-up, he managed to carry a pretty good match out of Rohit, which has got to be said. He wins in 7.47 with Grand Amplitude. A 53 is really good. Hell, yeah, well, that's pretty much straight to main event level. Uh, Chad with a 60 performance to the Heat's 39. So good on him. I'm proud of the Heat. He really held his own in this matchup. And Chad Bates starts his impact career with a victory. After the matchup, Rash Singh tries to jump Chad Bates. But of course, it's on his debut. You've got to make him look strong. And he hits Chaos Fury to send Raj Singh packing as well, which is a 29. Moving along, we had our other matchup in the Impact World Tag Team Tournament semi finals. And it was about they had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd as the Good Brothers defeat the North in 1358 when Doc Gallows pinned Ethan Page with the Magic Killer. So, a 54, everyone very level in terms of in ring performances. And that gives us a main event of the Impact Tag Team Champions, the Good Brothers, against FTR in the Impact World Cup. Tag Team Final. That should be damn good. Another matchup that was a hardcore match, because I haven't imported all the matches, so I went with hardcore for the laziness. And it was about to hit some good heat and decent wrestling as Darby Allen and Sammy Callahan defeated Ken Shamrock and Pentagon in 930 when Sammy got some revenge when he pinned Ken Shamrock with a lariat. A 52 overall, everyone again very level in terms of performance. Ken Shamrock a 42, but obviously the man's nearly 60 and is obviously on a big, as you can see, physical decline. That's crazy. Ken Shamrock was penalised for not being a very good heel. I'm surprised at that. Made that storytelling, as you can see there. Hardcore match. Then at the hype package for Suicide, if we are going to get the character over, we need to hype it up on these kind of events with more exposure. So that was a 14. And he took on Caleb Conley, and he wins in 5.59 by pinfall. We've got to give him the lowest of low matches to start with and build him up. But a 34, and uh, yeah, yeah, just a last minute addition here just to try and get the Suicide character over, since the tag team of Phoenix doesn't work. We then had that matchup between Joe Doring and Eric Young against Enzo and Big Kaz. And a very level show here, a lot of 50s. But we had Joe Doring and Eric Young defeat Enzo and Kaz in 1350 when Young pinned Enzo with a spike pile driver. Enzo wasn't going to put them over, despite Eric Young being the most over man in the match. And the knuckles being clenched by Joe Doring had Enzo going a little bit soft and he retreated to take the defeat. But I felt it made sense. Obviously we're going to use Enzo and Kaz well, but I'm still wanting to book Joe Doring over as good as we can. And Eric Young is a very, very good hand to have. And because of Enzo's crap, I put him through a table after the matchup. So Eric Young does that, a 46, and that is why you have to put people over cleanly or face the consequences, Mr. Enzo. This is promo as we get ready for our third from last matchup for the Impact World Championship. He just says he's tired of Rich Swan walking around being the champion, he's the true champion of Impact Wrestling and he's going to prove that tonight and that was a 49 and their matchup was poor. Good heat, decent wrestling, Rich Swan defeated Moose in 1703 with a chicken fried driver, makes the fifth defence of the Impact World title. I just don't really have MD I want to take the title off of Rich Swan, so I'm happy to keep the belt on him. The 42, right, let's be honest, that is severely hampered because of the lack of psychology. So if these two are going to wrestle, it has to be way less than 17 minutes. So I gave it a good spotlight. And because the match dragged in the middle, the lack of flow, and Swan being off his game, this is why it was heavily penalised. Both guys have great chemistry, so I think if you put them in like a 10 minute match, it's easily going to be in the 50s. But on this day... It was not great. So you see there, inconsistencies and penalised, given limited psychology. So quite a few negatives there. 
gave him an opportunity. Thank God it wasn't our main event. Speaking of our main event, this is the co main event next, and it was for the Knockouts Championship. It was a decent matchup that saw Diona Perazzo defeat Jordan Grace in 13 31 by submission with a Fujiwara Ambar. This gave Diona the fourth defence of the Knockouts Championship. A 52 overall here, 54 from Diona, 47 from Jordan. And both of these women have great chemistry together and that elevated their performances. Delighted, a 52 at this rate. They're pretty much up there with the main event men, so that's fantastic from them. And as I say, hopefully the knockouts division can grow, such as the men's division. But we didn't just leave it there. There was a two on one beatdown on Jordan Grace by Diona and Kimberly. And making the save, making their Impact Wrestling debut, we had Thunder Rosa come in fight them off and save Grace from a serious beating. So I think we know what programme we're going for next as I quickly hover between them. But a 43 and Thunder Rosa continues to make a statement here in Impact. So I must have used her before and forgot about it because she didn't get a debut there. And our main event for the evening was for the Impact Tie Team World Cup Trophy. In a superb matchup, the team of Cash Wheeler and Dax Harwood, FTR, defeated the Good Brothers in 1749 when Dax Harwood submitted Doc Gallows with an inverted figure four after blatantly cheating. This means they win the Impact World Cup tournament, which also means they might just make them number one contenders. That'll be something we'll look at in the next few weeks. But a 60 rated matchup, it makes you wonder how good this could have been if Dax didn't have the injury. But, eh. Uh, they claim to be top guys, we've given them an opportunity, and they've ran through every tag team and impact over the course of this tournament. And we finished the show with them celebrating. 49. So overall, the show itself gets a 57. The show increased their popularity in 56 regions. Uh, what I will say is as well, that's greatly helped by that opener. Obviously you can see that our production values and music are slightly worse than our rivals. NXT and someone else has basically updated it to the highest level and I just can't justify the financial costs of it with the money we've got at the moment so it's going to take a bit of a hit in the rating so I'm going to have to really put up some good main events and good promos but until we are financially in a much better position I can't risk moving to that level. Also going to be on this event on Friday so that gives the opportunity for us to uh, actually get the AW stars because if we booked that show at the same time as say they done a they done a show, we'd be struggling. So we'll kick back, as I say, hopefully we'll see a size gain. Hopefully we'll be in a better position financially. Of course we've still the end of the month figures to add to that so we could end up losing money. But yeah I was pretty happy with that. So what we've got here, Chris Statlander stays uh, with AW a bit longer, ODB's going to retire, and Chris Rodriguez is back from injury, we have Leo Rush, want a pay rise, I know we need to watch finances but like some wrestlers are just kind of need them, so 59,000 viewers and 14,000 not point not 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 point not two buys, that's terrible, that is terrible. Pay per view revenue is down 3,000 odd. The ticket sales are up, so that's good. Broadcast revenue is up. Sponsorships up. Worker costs are unfortunately up, as is the show costs. But you can just see even the gap of production that we've done at the start. So it's not a lot of profit at the moment. I think we'll probably see debt this month. Uh, but at least our size is up. So in order for us to get to medium, yeah, we, we could even be looking at a couple of years here. Um, but it's just as I say, ideals are not ideal. I'm curious if we did cancel it. Yeah, we can't. That puts us in debt straight off the bat. So we are stuck with this deal for a while. I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be a challenge. This is not going to be easy. And it's up to us to, to make stars, keep the, everything relevant and interesting, and hopefully take this company back to where it was and then higher. So cheers for watching, hope you enjoyed it. 
type my build on to our next event, which will be a pay-per-view in April. I don't know what it's going to be called yet. There's nothing in the, the game yet, as you can see. It would have Slammiversary next. But um, I'll just find a, a pay-per-view name of Impact's past, and we'll bring it back. And that's the plan, so I'll have a 12 pay-per-view model. So until next time, cheers for watching. Take it easy. Good day and good night, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.